Hello everyone. Before I start, I want to say that I'm a Ukrainian and I'm deeply worried about Russian military deployment in Crimea. I lost my sleep, I lost my appetite. I feel like a drug addict who cannot let go Newswire and Facebook. My parents and my children are in Ukraine and I'm afraid for them. I'm also afraid for my friends, which I have plenty on both sides. <clears throat> and I hope that negotiations and international pressure will avert the bloodshed. Because if the war starts, it will be very nasty. It will feel more like a civil war, as virtually every family has a relative on the other side. I thought about changing the topic of my speech or canceling it altogether. But I worked on it for two months and at the end I decided that I will not let Putin derail my plan. <laughs> I am standing at the roof of a tall building near the ancient church. I hear a distant noise, like a rumbling wave it is growing and moving in my direction. The ground starts shaking under my feet. Boom! First crack cuts through the roof. Boom! Boom! More and more cracks open up all around me. I want to run, but my legs are so heavy. But I start moving, and when I get to the edge of the roof, I see that the whole town is taken over by a powerful earthquake. <clears throat> the building just on the other side of the street from me <clears throat> collapses, taking a cloud of dust into the air. I realize I have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I shiver and wake up. <clears throat> it's four in the morning and I can't believe I just had one of those dreams. Again, what are they trying to tell me? What is this powerful force shaking up my world? Is it a threat? or an opportunity for me. <clears throat> but I was not realizing at the time that I'm entering a midlife crisis. <laughs> and today I want to tell you this deeply personal story and share a few lessons learned. At 35 I thought I have everything figured out. My life was close to perfect. Cool executive job, stable family, bright future. I was focused on success, and I was very busy making other people happy. My boss, my wife, my clients. It was not easy, but damned I was good at it. <laughs> <coughs> my image was spotless, a story of constant progression, so good that even Stanford was unable to say no to me. <laughs> but deep inside, I was far from being happy. I was suffocating. I sought one more project, one more achievement, and my happiness will surely arrive. But instead, I got the earthquake dreams. And it was just the last straw. I realized it's all fake. I worked so hard for so long, and all I'm getting is this? Blat! I will no longer play by the rules. And instead, I turned towards myself and asked, what do you need to be happy? I'm glad you finally asked. <laughs> <laughs> 
and so the dialogue has started. Those conversations made me to realize some uncomfortable truths. That I do not really know myself, and that I'm afraid to know. That with every day I'm getting older, and tomorrow might never come. That my happiness is only my responsibility, and it's not going to happen unless I embrace not only my light, but also my dark side. And so I started changing, coming late and unprepared for the board meeting, street fighting occasionally, <laughs> and falling madly in love with risk and uncertainty. People who knew me were shocked. My wife wanted psychiatrists to fix me. <laughs> My boss concluded Anatoly is lazy, but still talented. And I remember my mom crying, are you out of your mind? <laughs> but ironically, first time in many years, I was actually fine. I felt like an animal that broke out of its cage. And I gave up safety, stability, and comfort. But in return, I got freedom, presence in the moment, and an ability to improvise. <clears throat> Yet this period of my life was terrifying. My perfect life was crumbling in front of my eyes. Earthquake has ruthlessly worked through it, turning it into a pile of debris. I quit my dream job. I divorced after 14 years together, and I moved here to the other side of the globe. At times I felt miserable, totally lost and helpless, like a newborn baby. And I'm extremely grateful to my relatives for support and for my teachers of Gestalt, Tantra, and Psychoanalysis for guidance. And so, today, first time in my life, I'm breathing fully. <clears throat> the earthquake has moved on, leaving me with a sound of silence. And in this silence, I hear a soft, calm voice raising from deep inside of me. Sometimes I lose it, but sometimes I hear it loud and clear filling my every membrane with ecstatic vibration. In those moments, I feel an opening and incredible space in my chest. In those moments, I feel goosebumps running from my feet through my spine to the back of my head. In those moments, I feel my whole body trembles in a single beat with the universe. <coughs> And sometimes after those moments, I think that maybe my ex-wife was right, and I do need to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> now, at some point, you might experience tremors too. My advice, do not go through this alone. Seek help. There are many people who had such crises before, and they can help you on this path. Second, do not try to run away from the earthquake, because you cannot possibly run away from yourself. And remember, it's not so much a threat as an opportunity. An opportunity to find your own voice. An opportunity to reconnect with yourself on a much deeper level. An opportunity for the awakening. And I want to conclude with the words of one of the oldest prayers on earth, Gayatri Mantra. <clears throat> Our soul's mission is to be a lighthouse that will awaken the enlightened being within others. 
Namaste.